Hello, I'm Gabriel. Hi, I'm Luis. Welcome to Capri News, a series of updates with relevant topics uh, to the coffee industry from seed to cup. Today, uh, we're here to talk about the elephant in the room. Just to make sure, not me. Oh yes, definitely not Luis. Today, we're here to highlight some insights about the coffee market and a big picture on Brazil's current situation. Coffee market. The topic of the moment. I'm talking about it, you're talking about it, the whole coffee team chain is talking about it. So let's talk about it. Luis, could you please paint us a picture on how coffee market behaved in 2023 and maybe, maybe make a prediction for 2024? Uh, yeah, that's a, a big one. Yeah. <laughs> the several billions of dollars question. Uh, so first of all, I think 2023 brought uh, a lot of learning process to the different actors of the coffee chain, of the coffee industry. Uh, the year changed a lot because of different reasons. We know Brazil is one of the biggest coffee players in the world, both in production, exportation and consumption. Uh, and we were coming from three years that production was severely impacted by La Nina, that means a drought, and we also had some frosts. So the production of Brazil, of Brazil was decreased a lot. And uh, the predictions for 2023 crop were much better than the previous crops, because at the end of 2022, Brazil received uh, great rains. So after three years of severe weather conditions, um, the weather was transitioning to an El Nino. And El Nino, most part of time, uh, means that the Brazilian coffee belt will receive um, a good amount of rains. Uh, and from September 22 on, that really happened. So the expectations were really good. So what we saw in the beginning of 2023 was a market that was still reflecting the lack of principally Arabica coffee, uh, so with higher prices. And as soon as the weight of the new crop came to the market, uh, we saw prices going down. We saw the C market reacting to this bigger Brazilian crop that was coming. Uh, and that um, was the, the behavior of the market until more or less October. The thing is that uh, we had a drastic change in the weather from three years of La Nina to a strong El Nino. Uh, but the results were not as the average impacts that we generally have with El Nino in Brazil, uh, because this strong El Nino this season had one big difference is that generally when we have strong El Ninos, and El Nino means that the Pacific uh, Ocean waters are warmer, uh, we generally have the Atlantic Ocean, the southern part of Atlantic Ocean, also warmer. And this is what causes more rains in the coffee belt from Brazil. But at this season, we had one uh, different condition, that the South Atlantic, instead of being warmer, is colder. So this means that the rains were super erratic and because of the strong El Nino, also the temperatures were very high. So from September on, October on, the Brazilian fields are suffering from these conditions um, of drought, uh, high temperatures, and these temperatures are much higher than the average temperatures. Uh, and also a lot of sun radiation. And then with the other conditions of the market, uh, the sea market started to behave completely different. Uh, so instead of this expectation of huge uh, Brazilian crops for both 24 and 25, uh, now there is a, a massive question mark in terms of what is the Brazilian crop is gonna be. Uh, but the holistic situation is much more complicated because in the top of the weather problems that Brazil is facing, uh, we also have some different problems. Right now, because of the war in Israel, uh, we're also facing a logistic uh, crisis. Uh, 
uh, with a lot of difficult on moving coffee from origin to destinations. We are also seeing the stocks of New York exchange going down, and this also has this psychological effect uh, on phones and in the market. And not only uh, in terms of the Brazilian weather and the problems with logistics, uh, we also have uh, El Nino that is causing these erratic rains in Brazil and these high temperatures, but it's also affecting Vietnam uh, with a super um, huge dry season. So we also have these problems with Robusta. So right now Robusta is achieving super record prices. Uh, and this is also impacting uh, Arabica prices. Uh, but coming back to your question, what are the predictions for 2024? Yes. Um, it's going to be really critical. So we need to understand what is happening right now. Uh, and you need to bring a little of coffee physiology to the table, to the discussion. Uh, so if we look at the coffee physiology, how it behaves and the phase that coffee in Brazil is right now, uh, Brazil Right now, uh, we are beginning the summer uh, and we are in the definition of the size of the screens for 2024 crop. The fact is that if the weather condition changes and if you receive the rains that we should be receiving during summer because this is our rainy season, uh, part of the losses could be reverted or avoided if we have a rain season mainly during February and March, because during February and March is when the plant is going to be filling the beans, uh, and this will have a drastic um, impact on productivity and, and production. Uh, so we need to keep a huge eye in weather and in all other aspects of the market, but definitely the 2024 will probably not be a Brazilian record, because of the problems with rains and heat. And we are also showing a red losses to the crop of 2025 uh, because of problems in the vegetative period of the coffee trees. Okay. Uh, do you think there's something the producers can do to mitigate these problems or this um, drought season problems that we have in Brazil? Yeah. Uh, there is a lot of things uh, that farmers can do. Uh, and the things that we cannot change. So when you have a too severe drought, it's really hard. Um, but as a matter of fact, when you have wealthy plants, they behave better to whatever kind of stress. The big problem that we have with a drought is not only the lack of water, but when you have a drought uh, during the rain seasons, and in Brazil, we are now transitioning to a summer, that means we have a lot of sun radiation. And if it's not rainy, you do not have the protection of the clouds. So we have a high incidation of ultraviolet rays that can damage the coffee leaves. Uh, and also you are going to have higher temperatures. So the plant physiology is that when you have this kind of stresses, and it can be a thermic stress and hydric stress or the stress of a lack of nutrition, the plant starts synthesizing specific hormones and it will stop the photosynthesis. And that's why it's so harmful for production and not only for one crop, but for several crops because of the way coffee behaves. So for farmers, what is the lesson that needs to be done? First is being able to manage the soil uh, to produce organic matter to avoid erosion and compactation. So all the water that is received can be storage as a buffer uh, to go through these periods when you have less uh, rains. The second thing is the wealthiness of the plants. So if the nutritional program is good, you have wealthy plants that can behave better with these stressful conditions. That means if you have a lack of leaves, the plant will overheat and the plant will not uh, gonna be able to produce the carbohydrates that are needed to face the stress phase. So pruning, uh, the manage of plagues and diseases, uh, nutrition is, uh, is really key in order to have the plants healthier so they can face all this stress that we are passing through. Uh, well, that's very important. And if you're a producer and you're watching this, stay tuned. 
And if you have any questions, you can just ask Luis uh, here at Capricornio. We're always open to, to helping producers. But I have a, a question to Luis. Uh, does this um, affect uh, Robusta and Arabica in the same way, this uh, drought seasons? Yeah, that's a, a very nice uh, question. And we need to understand um, nature and the uh, origin centers of uh, both Robusta and Arabica. So when we look to Arabica, its origin center um, are under shaded areas, uh, highlands in Ethiopia, Kenya, and South Sudan. Uh, so Arabica does not tolerate too high temperatures, uh, but has a little better behavior in terms of drought uh, tolerance. When we look at Robusta, Uh, the Robusta origin center are lower areas in terms of altitude in the equatorial zones in Africa that receive much more sunlight and has a huge amount of rains. So if from one side Robusta has a better tolerance for heat, it has a lower tolerance for drought. Uh, and what we are seeing right now in Brazil is that some of the areas that produce Robusta, mainly Espírito Santo, in the northeast of Brazil, uh, it's suffering a lot uh, of losses because of the drought and the heat. Uh, while the Arabica zones that are located southeast uh, are, are still facing more losses in terms of the potential of the size of the screen for the new crop and some of the vegetation uh, period, so uh, for the crop of 2025. Wow, so that does that mean um, Robusta are suffering more, so prices are rising? Yeah, right now we have this uh, conjunction of factors that Vietnam uh, exported less than was supposed to uh, and is also fa facing a drought. And the same, the producing zones of uh, Conilon uh, in Brazil uh, also facing a drought and that's part that explains uh, some of the record prices of Robusta right now. Okay, so Robusta will be like one factor that are rising sea prices, the, the, the Arabica coffee. But do you think there are other factors that are impacting, impacting mainly uh, these high prices that we're seeing right now? Yeah, uh, we have all these different factors working together. So coming back to the review of 2023, uh, when we started the year with all this expectation of the size of the crop, And if you remember January of 2023, market probably overreacted in terms of uh, taking the sea market too low because the expectation was of super high crops in Brazil. Uh, and then it came back to some levels of uh, stability. Uh, but some of the things that we saw during 2023, because of the Brazilian currency, and I think that's another import, important point, So uh, putting together the sea market that went down after April because of the weight of the Brazilian crop uh, with the Brazilian real, uh, it reverted in lower prices for Brazilian farmers in reais per bag. So what we saw is that several farmers that were not supposed to prune their areas, they uh, finally Uh, found a, a technical solution to decrease the costs of production, pruning more areas than they were supposed to. So the crop that was in the beginning of 2023 predicted maybe to 2024 be the record crop for Brazil, uh, slowly showed that was not uh, true because of some of the areas that were pruned because of lower prices, lower technical investments because not necessarily the costs of production were being compensated by higher prices received by the Brazilian farmers. Uh, so we, we slowly reduced the potential of the 2024 crop. Just after that, we saw El Nino coming with erratic rains because of what I just explained in terms of the different behavior of the South Atlantic Ocean. So what we, are, we, we saw in Brazil is that a huge drought in the Amazon region, what is, what is not uh, what we expect when you have strong El Niños. This is the expectation. So if we look to the historical registers, 
you see big droughts with uh, strong El Niños in the Amazon region. Uh, but also we saw a lot of heavy rains in the south part of Brazil. Uh, and this caused some troubles also in logistics. So some of the containers were stuck in the Amazon region. Some of the containers could not achieve the south of Brazil. Uh, and in the top of that, when we went to the war in the Middle East, uh, and now we have some danger in terms of a possible attacks uh, to logistic companies. Uh, we are having this logistic crisis that making more expensive and even harder to move coffees from origin uh, to destinations. Uh, in terms of demand, uh, we still see the, the demand uh, that is organically growing. There was a question mark in terms of the European demand because of the, the war from Russia with Ukraine first, uh, and now with this new scenario in terms of uh, geopolitical problems, uh, and also the crisis of energy, uh, mainly in Europe, because of the war between uh, Russia and Ukraine. So this all uh, increased the costs of, of coffee and also the costs of production uh, of the, the roasters, uh, and put it a question mark in terms of consumers' consumption because of the costs of capital and the inflation that is decreasing uh, the power of purchasing mainly um, uh, industrialized co uh, countries around the world. Uh, so all this put together, uh, we come back to a scenario that we had in the beginning of 2023 that the, what was uh, designed was pro probably a huge crop in Brazil in 2023 that was rebalancing the amount of Arabica in the world, followed by a huge possibility of a record 2024 crop. Now what we see is that we had a, a good 2023 crop in Brazil. We really rebalanced the amount of Arabica coffee. But now there is a lot of question marks for 2024. The first one, availability of Robusta because of both Vietnam and Brazil. Uh, the second one, how is the Brazilian crop will be defined in terms of Arabica? Because right now, coffee trees are stressed. Uh, it came from a stressful winter. It's going to a stressful summer. Uh, and we need to look what is going to happen next. So there is this massive question marks in, in, in the market in terms of uh, the capital being more expensive, logistics being chaotic again, uh, availability of both Arabica and Robusta uh, is still not very well defined. So all these together is a part explaining this massive volatility that we are seeing nowadays. Wow, <laughs> that's a lot of issues and on top of each other. Uh, so we had um, drought season when it shouldn't be, right? Um, wars and uh, logistic crisis yeah. is there. Capital. Capital, yes. The stocks in the stocks. consuming countries decreasing. Exactly. Is there like a silver lining, like a, a, a light in the end of the tunnel? What should we expect in January so that we can like have um, a good uh, expectation for next crop yeah. in Brazil? Uh, if the weather in Brazil comes back to normality, that means the, the rains when we have most amount of rains, uh, in Brazil is summer, so we are speaking about December to March. Uh, so as the projection of the crop was a big one, if these rains come back, we will have part of these losses compensated or at least stop the losses. Uh, and then we still need a good vegetation period. Uh, and there is another uncertainty. Some of the weather institutes are saying that there is a possibility of this El strong El Nino transitioning for La Nina again. And that would be the chaos. So let's help it's not happens. Uh, let's uh, hope that we have a, a normality comes, coming back, that we could uh, achieve a good 2024 crop and that we can compensate part of the losses for 2025. Uh, but we'll probably still see some issues in terms of Robusta because uh, the two main uh, producers uh, are facing issues right now. 
Um, and so let's see what, what happens in the future. So damage is already done in Robusta, so it's not like something we can compensate now. Depends on the severity, depends on the agronomical uh, practices that you, you do. So as better the practices, uh, lower the, the, the damage. Uh, but again, what we are seeing right now this year in Brazil is something uh, different in terms of uh, the heat. So not only coffee being affected, uh, but we have a lot of information in the news of other crops like corn, and soy being very severely affected in the Middle East of Brazil, for example. Uh, and this will probably also impact other commodities price uh, in a midterm. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> yes. Okay, Luis. Um, to wrap things up, uh, we're finishing our first episode. I would like to ask you uh, two questions in one. Uh, Louis, as a producer, you put on a hat as a producer. What would be the recommendations for the coffee producers in Brazil against this high uh, volatility in prices? And uh, Louis, as a trader in Capricornio, uh, the same question. How would be the recommendations for them? Yeah, that's a great and complex question. Uh, let place first my farmer hat. Uh, I would say that farmers are facing right now in Brazil two of the most complicated problems. One is the uncertainty in terms of weather, and the second is the uncertainty in terms of the market. Uh, so I would say uh, farmers should take a lot of care in terms of farm management. First, to look at the costs of production, and second, to have some strategies in terms of the commercialization. So hedging margins, uh, when, when the opportunities come. Uh, and the second thing is timing. So when you look at agronomical practices, uh, timing is the most uh, important factor. So with the weather the way it is right now, you need to understand the plant physiology uh, and look for the best timing to make all the operations uh, so you can achieve production uh, and also quality. Uh, from the trader's uh, side hat, uh, I would recommend uh, clients from around the world uh, to look and manage their stocks. So we know um, money is very expensive right now, uh, but they need to understand that the transit time uh, and all um, the procedures between the purchase and receiving the final product uh, at destination uh, is taking much longer. Uh, and the volatility that we are seeing right now daily it will probably not end uh, soon. So from all the aspects that we, dis uh, you know, we discussed here, uh, so take a, a good look in the purchasing strategies, uh, head your positions uh, and avoid uh, to making orders uh, according to your necessity. You need to be really strategic on that uh, and forward thinking about that. Uh, so Capricornio is always here. So as your Brazilian supplier, uh, if you have any questions about all the subjects that we discussed it, uh, as a farmer or uh, as a client, please let us know. Uh, let's keep in touch. And we hope you enjoyed this episode as we did. Hey, thank you, Luis. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for thinking differently with us. And stay tuned for the next episodes. Feel free to comment if you have any topics you would like us to talk about. Um, thank you, Luis. Let's make a toast. Oh, yes, for sure. Thank you so much. Cheers. For a blessed new year full of incredible coffees and health. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.